Tonight we are talking about things we dislike, things we hate about living in Northern Virginia. Some things that you'll probably also come encounter with as you move uh, to this area as well. So we want to kind of give you like a, a locals perspective. We've been here since 2013. Mm -hmm. Some of these things on this list are, are applicable to both of us. Some of them are not. Um, you'll find out at the end which one is just for one of us, uh -huh. which one is just for the other. Uh, but yeah, so we wanted to kind of give you an idea of exactly what to expect when you move to the Northern Virginia area. A lot of our videos on this channel are kind of centered around the kind of positive message of Absolutely. moving to Northern Virginia. Yeah, so there are some downsides, and we don't want you to be surprised when you get here and say that we didn't warn you because we're warning you now. That's true. That's true. And so we always find it that the more information you have about, you know, the area, about the houses, about the lifestyle, the more you can appreciate it, right? Like we all have family members that we both dislike and like, depending on the occasion. Mm -hmm. And Northern Virginia is going to be no different than a, love, a family member that you you love. It's a love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and also for everything that we share that maybe you won't love, we'll also share some solutions for that problem or even some even some workarounds um, to kind of get used to them or maneuver around them. That's right. So we're going to share with you four things we dislike about Northern Virginia. And we're also going to talk about some solutions to hopefully help you manage those uh, problems or at least manage your expectations when it comes to those problems yes um so we like to do the too long don't read the tilde uh format for these live streams because we know we're we're going a little late at night so mm -hmm. some of you have to get up in the morning uh so the first thing we're going to talk about is traffic uh yes it is horrible but there is some ways to manage it then we're going to talk about how expensive it is to live here um, mostly from a housing perspective. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to talk about, you know, it, it being challenging to meet people, right? Like it's, um, it's an interesting culture down it, well, up here. Mm -hmm. we're oh, south, wherever, you, yeah. where, wherever you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. wherever you're in the south, right? Uh, and then uh, lastly, allergies, right? So, so we got to talk about the allergies, especially if you're prone to allergies. Well, yeah, especially this time of year, because we're filming this video mid-April, and this is like the beginning of allergy season here in Northern Virginia. Yep. That's right. That's right. So we are already starting to see some teary-eyed folks walking around this place um, across the region, right? So before we jump in, just want to let you know that we have a Perfect Home questionnaire for anyone that's interested in starting the home buying process. Yeah, so the link is down in the description. You complete the Perfect Home questionnaire, and we will reach out to you to schedule your Perfect Home consultation with Abraham where he will answer any questions you have about the area and also help you narrow down your timeline, budget, and where exactly you want to live. So be sure to check out that link in the description. The way we format this show, our nights, uh, our nightly live stream is we have a couple of talking points uh, that we'll go through. Um, in between each talking point, we'll actually answer any questions that you may have. So put any questions that you have in the chat. Also, let us know where you're watching this show from. We'd love to know like where our audience is, uh, is located. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple people that are in Hawaii. We have some people in some Asian uh, parts of the world. We have some people in Germany. Um, yeah, and yeah, also a few uh, in California yeah, at the moment. The so we get, well. we get a lot of people on the West Coast watching, um, watching the show at this time of day. Yep. So excellent. So let's jump into our first uh, point is traffic, right? Um, so I know you heard about it. I know you're already preparing yourself for it. So yes, traffic is bad here. Mm -hmm. um, but I, Understatement. I think it's, I think it depends. I think it depends, right? I've heard what um, some of our clients who are moving to the area, re relocating to the area, what type of traffic they're used to. Mm -hmm. And while Northern Virginia does have traffic, it kind of depends on where you're going to work at, um, what region you're going to live in. And then just... Um, your comfort level right to the area so we have the, the lady in the corner there that represents the problem mm -hmm. and then we have somebody else in the corner for the solution 
Yeah, so according to U.S. News, uh, the national average uh, as far as how long people spend in traffic each year is about 99 hours. And here in the D.C. metro area, it's actually going to be 124 hours, which is um, the fifth highest in the country. Is actually one of the most congested metro areas uh, in the nation. And this has been ongoing. This has been going on for years. We're consistently at the top for tra traffic, for congestion. Um, so that is just something to be mindful of. This is something that has not changed. It probably will not change. So you just have to wrap your mind around the fact that you're going to deal with a lot of traffic when you relocate to the D.C. metro area. Yep. Another thing, too, is to consider is that even though we are a large metropolitan area by most standards, mm -hmm. our metro is not designed for you to catch it or to our public transportation isn't designed for you to use it exclusively right mm -hmm. so northern virginia is a car dependent area so if you did if you if you're living in some type of small town or middle america and you're you're thinking about coming to the big city and you're like oh my goodness you know I'll, i won't have i, won't I get need car, a car free living yeah um, mm -hmm. that's possible in some parts mainly right. in arlington not really anywhere let's say in the suburbs of northern virginia when i when i say that i mean places like Fairfax County, um, city of Alexandria, even really, um, also Prince William County, Stafford, Loudoun, those places are really not, those are car dependent areas. You're going to find it very difficult to get by without a car. And that's because Metro access is limited in the suburbs. So even if you're close to Metro, like we're not very far from the Metro, um, but it still isn't like, you know, walkable for us. And even for people, um, who are not far from the Metro, you're still going to have to park or drive to the Metro, um, and then if you get to some of those farther parts, farther western parts of Fairfax County, or if you're going south into Prince William County, then there's no metro at all. That's true. Now, there are public buses, but again, this is just, and that's just going to add to traffic. You're going to have to take a public bus, um, you know, on the interstate or to the metro station. So just be mindful that you'll spend a fair amount of time in traffic if you're going to be um, coming, either going into Arlington, going into Fairfax or into DC for work. Yep. So the Metro is really like a, a, a mode of transportation that just gets you to work, right. Or gets mm -hmm. you closer to work from your house. So you're driving to the Metro station and then you're getting on the Metro and then going home. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have weekend traffic here. So if you love traffic, we have traffic seven days a week. Yes. The gift right? that keeps on giving. Yep. Yeah. And we don't even have a beach too. So, I mean, it, it would be something different if we were like a vacation town, but I guess we are, I mean, there's I mean, a lot to do. do. Yeah. People do vacation here. I don't know if we necessarily call it a vacation town, but people do vacation here, which only adds to the traffic in the spring, pretty much from really this time of year, cherry blossom season on, um, you're really until like until the school year starts back again. Right. Um, so until the early fall, you're going to see an increase in traffic because of vacationers as well. And so when we talk about traffic, you know, peak hours for traffic here are like six to nine is considered rush hour. And then in the evenings from four to seven, you're looking at even more uh, rush hour traffic, especially if you're heading south. Um, leaving the district. So just an area with a lot of traffic. And as Abraham said, we also have weekend traffic so much so that this weekend you actually got caught up. And some weekend traffic, right? That's right. Yes, yeah. we were showing some properties to a client in Stafford, and the uh, GPS it normally takes about forty-five minutes to maybe fifty minutes to get to Stafford from where we are, which is right outside of Fort Belvoir in uh, Fairfax County. Um, while the GPS said it was going to only take an hour, an additional fifteen minutes, it actually took an extra. Uh, well, like 45 minutes, right? So it, nearly it, double yes. the trip. I mean, that was on a Saturday and he took the express lane. Yeah. So that was with him using the hub lane, the high occupancy vehicle or the easy pass lane. So it actually would have been even longer had you not used the hub lane. That's true. Um, that's and true. so that was just, I mean, and that's just the nature of the, like one car accident on the highway can double the time of your trip. That's true. And since there's so many cars on the highway, it's very likely that there will be an accident. <laughs> yep. So as far as like, what are the solutions, right? So I know this is going to seem simple, but moving closer to work, I wouldn't just say moving closer to work. Also, maybe trying to move cl as close as possible to the metro uh, station mm -hmm. uh, as well, um, because if you can move closer to the metro station, then you only have to rely on your ability to get to the metro station. And the metros are 
pretty reliable, pretty reliable, <laughs> pretty reliable right? Um, and when we say Metro, we're also talking about uh, VRE uh, station as well. So mm-hmm. Metro or VRE station, both of those modes of transportation are pretty reliable. And then at least even if you have like some lengthy commute using those modes of transportation, mm-hmm. you don't have, it doesn't rely on you. So you could relax, catch up on some audio books, catch up on a couple podcasts. Catch up on some sleep because yep. you have to leave the house so early because you're taking a metro into work. That's true. That's true. Uh, the next thing is there's another option that you have here, which is called slugging, right? Um, it doesn't, it, it does it. It's not what it sounds like, right? It's, it's slugging. It's not. It has nothing to do with slugs at all. Right? So slugging is essentially where you meet up at a predetermined location where you get into the car of a stranger, and they are going to drive you to whatever the final destination is for that particular slug line. And uh, essentially, they're going to take you know three people in their car so that they're able to use the HOV lanes, which is the next thing on the list. By doing by uh, having you know the minimum number of people in the car, they're able to use the HOV lanes without paying the the uh, toll. And so, you know, it's a win-win situation. You get to your destination more quickly than if you were not in the HOV lanes and they don't have to pay the toll. Also, it saves you from driving your own car and paying the toll or taking the metro. That's right. So I'm out, we're out, we live outside of Fort Belvoir and uh, Alexandria Fairfax County. When I was going to Stafford this past weekend, it was $35 um, for that particular trip. Right. So there's a reason why people use this slugging option. Mm-hmm. It's essentially carpooling. That's what yes, it is. It's carpooling. But it's carpooling with strangers. Perfect though. strangers. That, that's, that's different, right? <laughs> um, but we haven't seen any cases of any criminal activity. It's that... fairly common here. It's unusual. Not the criminal people. activity, the slugging. Well, the, the slugging, yes. yes. It, it's unusual to people who are not from here, are not right. familiar with it, but it's an everyday occurrence here in Northern Virginia. And like I said, the last thing on the list is going to be those hub lanes, um, which you can actually take advantage of. Like he said, he used his Easy Pass this weekend. It cost him thirty-five bucks to get to Stafford. Um, and again, even using that. But usually, when you use the HOV lanes, it, we very rarely run into traffic using HOV lanes. Like usually, That's true. it's pretty reliable. This weekend, it was not. But usually, when he uses the HOV lanes, he's able to cut his commute down uh, considerably. Although there usually is a considerable charge to go along with it. That's true. That's true. Okay, so let's jump into a couple of questions before we move to our next uh, segment. Oh, oh look, Clay. Hey, Clay. What is up, Clay? Clay How are you in, doing? Uh, Hawaii. Uh, congratulations, Clay. Clay just went under contract, so. Excellent. Congratulations. Let's see. What do we have next on our list? What's the next thing we have? Ah. Uh, it's pretty pricey to live here. Yeah. I don't know if we have told you guys that before. Have we mentioned that in a previous video that it's pricey? We, it's pricey. It is. Um, but just the housing. Yes. Right, just the housing. Absolutely. Yes. So we've covered the cost of living before, and we do have a video about the cost of living in the area that's already on the channel. And what we do find is the most expensive thing about living here is the cost of is the cost of homes. Like that's it. Outside of it, there's not a lot of variation as far as the cost right. of things like utilities, transportation groceries, all those things aren't really too much difference from the national average. In fact, a couple of them, just a few, are a little bit below the national average. But one thing that is pretty costly here is finding a home. Yep. And that's whether you're buying or renting. Um, And right now we're in a really interesting place in the market where um, what we're seeing is that home prices are increasing. We're going to go over some numbers in just a second that's going to show you the average price um, for some homes in the area. Um, and, and that's going to be from the last year where we saw for the average home prices in 2021. Um, but what we're going to see is that pretty much every area the prices went up. And what we expect to see in the near future is that the price of rent is also going to go up, right? That's true. That's true. The one cool thing about this area, or I don't know if it's cool if you're a landlord, is that since we have so many uh, members of the military that are usually renting in this area, Mm -hmm. the BAH kind of puts almost like a limiter on the rental prices in the area. So as much as it it is, it's, it's pretty expensive to live here, you won't find that rent is um astronomically high to cover most of the landlords mortgage payments right Mm -hmm. so well the reason i think that we may see it go up is just because you know tax assessments came out 
uh, a few weeks ago. And with that, we noticed a lot of people complaining about the increased tax assessments. And usually based upon how much they went up because of the increased values in the area, home values in the area, their increased sales price of homes in the area is we do expect some landlords uh, to try to recoup some of that money that they're going to be paying additional taxes. You think that? I do think that. Yeah, I don't think so. You don't think so? Not at all, because the the BAH is like fixed income. So it since it's similar to like a subsidy, the landlords can't really um, increase the price and then try to put more of a financial uh, burden on the um, the tenant. And so because we have so many members of the military who are really kind of being priced out of the market in the Fairfax County, Arlington area, unless they're going to condos, then they're going if they're going to move up to this um this part of the region i think mm-hmm. that a lot of landlords are just going to bite the bullet and they're not going to really be able to uh cash flow those properties i mean landlords haven't been able to cash flow properties mm-hmm. in this area for quite a while so mm-hmm. i don't see that really change i think if anything what we'll see is we'll see less people trying to hold on to properties mm-hmm. when they maybe move out of the area because of the downward pressure that bah basic Housing allowance, mm-hmm. um, well, or, or basic allowance for housing, whatever. It is. Base, yeah, base. Yeah. But base, here's yeah. the thing, though. See, this is why I disagree with you. We already see re- rents in this area increase every year. It, every year, if a property rents one year at t- twenty six hundred, the next year is on at twenty seven fifty. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It remains to be seen. It's the beginning of the year. I think that you know we'll have to see what happens throughout the rest of this year. Um, and then possibly in 2023, we may see a jump because usually, you know, when the new rates come out. Yes, um, that's so true. Yeah, we'll so. see what happens. We'll keep an eye on it. But that is what I think is going to happen. Excellent. Um, and a little conflict. That's what's up. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell them about the average prices that we saw in each area? Okay. So City of Alexandria, 1.15. Arlington, 1.2. Uh, Fairfax County, now. 900,000 and then uh, Prince William County is 600,000. And these are for single family homes, just so you know. This is the average sales price of single family homes last year. Yep. And then the rents are in that subsequent uh, column there. Uh, just keep in mind that we are starting to see uh, we have a lot of members of the military who mm-hmm. reach out to us and use our content to kind of make decisions. So if you look at that number right there, Prince William County is going to be one of the, really the, the last counties that actually will um, you'll be able to buy a single family home within your BAH. Absolutely. And also rent for under 3000 And just so you guys know, this rental average here is for single family and townhome. So you're looking at 3500 in the city of Alexandria, 30 3,800 in Arlington, 3,500 in Fairfax County, and in 2,700 in Prince William County. So quite a savings if you're going, really, excuse me, if you're willing to move to Prince William County there. I don't know. I don't know if it's a savings as much because you do have to live in Prince William County. There's a that's reason true. why the prices are more affordable in Prince William County. And that's because you're going to have a longer commute, which we already covered in a previous <laughs> section. You're going to deal with more traffic. And, uh, wait, uh, it, wait, wait, wait. It's not just that you have a longer commute. Mm-hmm. There's also less to do in Prince William County. You're further away from the employment bases. You're further away from things to do. Um, I mean, there's a post I just put up in one of the uh, agent groups where I was asking people, what do you consider is Northern Virginia? I mean, some of the agents don't even consider Prince William County uh, Northern Virginia because it is outside of the general, you know, the the, the happenings of things, mm-hmm. right? And so I think that, yes, Prince William County is more affordable, but it does come at a cost. It comes at a cost, and you just have to weigh the pros and cons of that. Um, another thing, too, about Prince William County that's a little bit different than, I would say, Fairfax County, a city of Alexandria and Arlington County, does, they don't have enough transactions or that many transactions mm-hmm. to really kind of talk about this difference, but Prince William County has really two sections. There is the section off of 95, uh, which is going to be like that Woodbridge area. And then there's the section off of 66, which is going to be like the Gainesville area. So Gainesville, off of Gainesville, there's going to be uh, off of 66 in the Gainesville area. There's going to be more newer construction. So Mm -hmm. this 602 number is not going to get you what you want, but it's also... If you're in the military, I'm speaking to the military members right now, you're probably not going to be living in the Gainesville area anyway because it's going to be a much longer commute to any bases uh, in the areas. Yeah, when we talk about Prince William County, although we use the stats for the whole area, for the most part, 
we're focusing more on Manassas and everything west of it. Uh, because really, if you're looking at Gainesville, Haymarket, Noakesville, like for the a lot of the people we work with are going to be either working in D.C., working at one of the bases. So we really don't see as many people who are going to be living that far out west. Yes. And that's, a, 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 um, I guess, um, a reason for that is because the Gainesville area is going to be a little bit more expensive. It's newer. Uh, there's larger homes in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of our new construction properties are just larger in general because we have the population base that makes enough money to support those larger uh, properties. Mm-hmm. Right. So now, as far as like solutions are concerned, you got to come to a compromise. You got to compromise in this region. Yes, you're spending six hundred thousand dollars. We used to say five hundred thousand dollars. But yes, you're spending six hundred thousand dollars for your first home. Mm-hmm. This could be your first home. And if you only have six hundred thousand dollars, then you're probably looking at a townhouse in Fairfax County. Mm-hmm. You're definitely looking at a townhouse in Fairfax County, or you're yeah. looking at a single family home in Prince William County. Mm-hmm. But even the print, even the single family home you're looking at in Prince William County, it may not have everything you want or desire. Mm-hmm. You 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 know some of our clients just have to give up their hopes and dreams on having like this large lot yeah. and all their trade off. Yes. So a lot of people end up if they absolutely are dead set on having a single family home and they want to stay below $700,000, chances are they're going to move to Prince William County. Now there are some homes you can find. I mean, the thing is right now what we're seeing is even if you find one listed below 700, that doesn't mean you're actually going to get it right. So what we end up seeing is a lot of people decide they make a decision on the front end. Well, hold single- on. So you said that even if you see something listed for 700,000, they may not get it. That's no, the, if you see something, a single family listed for, you know, close to $700,000. Right. And the reason why they may not get it is because uh, a lot of our properties, I mean, more than three quarters of our properties are being bid up over the asking price. Mm-hmm. So the price that you see listed isn't the price that these houses are selling for mm-hmm. in this market. right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so what we see a lot of buyers doing it, they're going to decide on the front end, do they want a townhouse or do they want a single family home? And depending on their budget, some can afford to buy a single family home in Fairfax, Arlington, City of Alexandria. Many choose to move to Prince William County because, again, you can find a single family home at a lower price point than you can find one in any of those other areas here in Northern Virginia. So we have the compromise, or you have to choose which one is more important to you. So keep in mind that if you really want the bigger home, you're probably going to end up increasing your commute, um, or you can compromise and if you're satisfied with townhome living and you don't necessarily need a lot of yard space you don't need huge rooms like you're not we're not talking about small bedrooms right but you don't want huge rooms well in that case then you may end up staying being able to stay closer in um be able to stay in closer in in fairfax county yep and so just to kind of give you an idea of the sales uh so uh fairfax county sales are the same amount as Prince William County and Arlington uh, and Alexandria, right? You mean the number of transactions? The number of transactions, right? Mm -hmm. And then Prince William County is the same number of transactions as both Arlington and uh, City of Alexandria. So that's why we kind of talk a lot about the Fairfax County area, just because it there's so many sales. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the um, the average sales price of a single family home, you know, nine hundred sixty four thousand dollars that means that that's usually two a two income home and Mm -hmm. and not just like regular income that's like two (laughs) people who are probably making one hundred and twenty thousand dollars or more so it's not necessarily a um it's not uncommon but we are starting to see more of the first-time home buyers just trying to go to that prince william county area and that's kind of why we you don't see as much content just even online about Arlington or City of Alexandria just because they there really isn't that many, there aren't that many sales. There aren't that many transactions. Yes. Actually, as I'm preparing for our next video, that's one thing I'm seeing. Like there are far fewer transactions in those two areas, although they are the most expensive. But it's not just because they're the most expensive. That's not really why I think we see less. Those are two relatively small areas. Yeah. Prince William County and Fairfax County are massive in comparison to those two other areas. That's true. That's true. Um, the next thing you probably want to do is just look at increasing your, um, well, uh, we talk about compromise. Small spaces are okay, right? Um, small spaces, townhouses um, specifically. We have a lot of clients who are already moving to from an area um, that is only um 
that only consist of single family yeah, homes. Yeah, only have detached homes. Yeah. Right. And then they come here and they're like, Abraham, I don't know if I can if I can do a um, mm-hmm. a townhouse. And I just want to let you know, a lot of people do it. A lot mm-hmm. of people do it. It's not uncommon. It's fairly common. It's very yes. common here. And if you if you're able to make that compromise on space, then you make that up in your commute time, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you're not willing to compromise on the space, then of course you would have to increase your uh, commute. And just so you know, a lot of people choose to increase their commute because some people, again, they're not familiar with townhomes. A lot of people do choose to increase their commute so they can get more space um, because space is at a premium uh, anywhere, Fairfax, Arlington, and Alexandria. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have the income to qualify for the larger purchases, then increasing your commute to increase the size of property is going to be um, the compromise you make. Now, I will say, even though um, uh, people are making that transition to... Um, deciding to live in Prince William County because of its affordability. Prince William County does encompass um, almost all your needs. So if you move to any one of these little suburban areas in the Fairfax County or Northern Virginia area, there's grocery stores, there's little shops, there's restaurants. There's malls. Yes. Like, and there are also things to do. So we have an expansive park system throughout the Northern Virginia region. We have lots of county parks but also northern virginia regional parks throughout the area there's lots of entertainment options as far as i mean just anything you could think of a- aside from the monuments and things that you find exclusively in dc like museums and things of that nature you can find pretty much everything else every entertainment option that you have in dc there is some version of in other in parts of Northern Virginia. That's true. That's true. That's why I know that, you know, some people are like, man, I'm moving so far away from D.C. I mean, we live only like 20, 25 minutes away from D.C. And a lot of our friends, our neighbors do not go to D.C. They yeah. do not go. We when they when they hear how much how often we go, they're like, what are y'all doing? Why are yeah. y'all going so often? Mm-hmm. But we like to, you know, I, I, I I'm. I'm partial to city life, uh, city life. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. he does enjoy going into DC, but again, if you live in the suburbs, like we do, you're going to spend most of your time in the suburbs and, and you're okay. going to have everything you need You're gonna have everything in that area. Yep. Let's see. We Ex- have a, a comment that we can, uh, before we move on to our next section. Excellent. Excellent. So what's coming? So Adam says, I just got a contract in sleepy hollow, uh, elementary school. What are the places that we consider to rent an apartment that is zone proximity uh, because I have two kids and I don't know if I need to consider where to rent. That is a very p- specific It is. Question. Also, just really quickly, if you're going to be working at Sleepy Hollow as a teacher, I know plenty of teachers in the area who don't live in the neighborhood that their schools are in, but their kids are able to go to that school. So if you're oh, a teacher, you may be able to um, you may be able to contact the school to see if you'll be able to have your child, your children enrolled at the school. Otherwise, um, the next best thing is really just going to be to find the school, the address of the school and look for um, homes in that same zip code. Um, because, and, or even just do a search for that specific area, um, because it's hard to narrow down one school to find properties. That's true. That's true. So just, there is a link in the description to our perfect home questionnaire. I would highly suggest because of your super specific question (laughs) to, uh, just fill out that form. Um, and then we can answer that question at a later date and go into a little bit more depth about your unique, um, needs right excellent 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 so uh the next thing is people right so you're probably wondering like why do we dislike people here it's not that we dislike people it's just that meeting people here is a little different it's It's just challenging it's different uh it's you know uh this place you know the median age of most uh people here if you look at like the census is going to be anywhere from the uh, low 30s like 32 to the high 30s if it's uh, a more expensive area like the mclean area right Mm -hmm. it's gonna be like 38 39 right so that means that most of the individuals that, that are living in this area are really coming here as like a second career. And you know what happens when you come here as a second career, when you have when you relocate to this area from another um, part of the country, is that you 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 first of all, you just lost your college friends because you went into the real world mm-hmm. and got a real job. And now you're losing your first set of work friends. And now you're exhausted. You're like, I don't know if I could do this again. 
Yeah. So one thing I, we say about Virginia or North Virginia is that it is a South in name only. So do not move here expecting Southern hospitality. Because right. it's not what you're going to get. Um, it almost is. It doesn't have like a cold New York feel. And I'm sorry to my New Yorkers out there. Um, people just are not like overly friendly. And so it may take you a little while to meet people. Um and that's just because I think that a lot of people here are very busy. This is an area that people are really career oriented. And so they don't necessarily spend a lot of time being proactive and trying to make friends. And so we have people in the area who um, are very insular and they want to make work friends, right? Well, the problem with being, you can't make work friends here because your friend and you may both work in DC and you live in Lorton and they live in Herndon. And yes. now we're talking about an hour commute to hang out with your friend. So it's difficult to make friends at work because you guys are going to live so far away from each other. You're not going to be in the same areas. Um, and then you have people who you meet at different school functions, things like that. But everyone's new. You, you just moved here, you know, last month and they moved here six months ago or they moved here two months, uh, two years ago. And so and people are always in and out. It's a very transient area. And so some people don't want to meet new friends because um, they've already tried that before. And when they did that before, the person moved. Um, and so they're a little shell shocked they're, They don't really know. They're a little gun shy. Right. And so we run into that with people and they also don't want to be first is one of the things I told you um, I experienced. Um, when I when we initially moved here is that they're new, you're new, and no one wants to break the ice. That's true. I can see that. I can see that. I think that people here too just you know, when you were a kid, you a lot of your friends were made because you all were in close proximity, right? You mm -hmm. all were geographically close to each other and you didn't really have to like try to make friends. But here you moved here because maybe of a job or a career opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh and now um, you're you're kind of busy too. Like you you have work, you have uh, maybe a family life. Mm -hmm. Right there's 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 all these things that can really uh, preoccupy your time. Mm -hmm. And so meeting people can be uh, very discouraging. I know a lot of people who are they would love to um, engage in new relationships, mm -hmm. but they just they just don't have the time. Right? You have you have a longer commute here. Right? We just yeah. talked about the traffic. And then you have really high home prices, so you're kind of stressed about work, right? You got to perform. Maybe you got to get your ne next certification, mm -hmm. or you got to make your lateral move, or um... yeah. Well, also DC, the whole DC metro area has this uh, this uh, myth or this this lore about it that people only want to know what you do. So when you meet someone here, and we have a very rap bad reputation for that, you meet someone here, one of the first things they're going to ask you is what you do. And some people yeah. take offense to that. I don't personally because I think that it's just a natural icebreaker in a conversation. But a lot of people here think that the person wants to know what they do so they can judge them and figure out what box to place them in or to figure out what they can get from them. And that is a common thing here in the D.C. metro area. Um, and so I think that's another reason why it can be hard to meet people. Um, and so it can be challenging. So what do we think about those challenges? What could you possibly do? Well, I, I also just want to say before we move off, off of this, we have, uh, if you think about like what type of employer, uh, our employment base here, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a large military community, mm -hmm. but then we also have a large retired military community. So we have members of the military who are are kind of in their own little ecosystem mm -hmm. as far as like on base or just doing activities with their fellow um, military members. Also, they have connections of people who they were stationed with previously. Exactly. So they may know some people who are also here at the same time. Exactly. So then you have that 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 cohort right mm -hmm. and then you also have people who are retired military right and so they're still kind of connected to the military community so they don't necessarily have to necessarily engage with new relationships but they could mm -hmm. and I, I that's why i think that a lot of people actually like what do you what do you do because they're trying to get like what your rank is because they they've come from a ranking system mm -hmm. uh, a ranking ecosystem and then they're just like okay great like what what's your rank or what's your yes. what's your what do you do what does yes. your husband do or where right. you got and i think that that is true um a lot of times it's easier to connect to people who are more similar to you, even just meeting parents at schools. Um, when you're when you're a mom like me who had young kids when we first moved here and you're trying to get into these circles, but we're not a military family. Right. And so um, I couldn't get into those circles because those people were looking for people who are just like them or who they already had things in common with. Right. And so you just have to keep, you know, it's trial and error. You keep trying. 
keep at it. That's true. Another thing too is that since we have uh, a, a lot of um, we have a large government um, presence here, uh, government um, employees, people who are employed by the government, also have these different classifications too. They're E six, E seven, uh, alphabet this, alphabet right. that. So there's a lot of alphabets here. So so when people are asking you like, what do you do? They're really trying to figure out like based in the alphabet soup that we all are participating in. Where are you? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Um, and I, you know, I think that it, it's it is an easy icebreaker. Mm-hmm. And then, but some people, if they're um, if they are lower in the socioeconomic well, absolutely. conversation, absolutely. And I think it comes up quite a bit. Even I went to an event recently, a neighborhood event, a bunco uh, for my neighborhood, and that did come up. And people, you know, people are like, oh, I work for you know this department or whatever right. right and it was like oh what do you what is your class for? oh i'm a g whatever right. like that absolutely came up and people were like you know whatever it was she was pretty high up so everyone was like, oh i have no clue because i do not work for the government but everyone was really impressed by whatever her yeah whatever alphabet whatever that, that she was elected. Yes. it was good yeah and so <laughs> i think that that is another reason why uh people here in Northern Virginia kind of struggle to uh, make new connections because in, you know, we're from New Orleans where people really didn't really care like what you did for a living. They really cared about like um, what high school you went to, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or uh, we could talk about food, like what's your, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite mm-hmm. restaurant? What's your favorite musician? Or even musician? just the commonality of, of sports, right? Because even in this area, you're not going to, because it is a transient area, you don't have one team. Like, yes, there there's the Washington Commanders, but we're all from different places. So we have Cowboys. First of all, there are a lot of Cowboys fans here in general, but then you have people like us who are Saints fans and people who move from Philadelphia and they're Eagle fans. And so you don't have that commonality of us all rooting for the same team. That's true. That's true. So I think, it, I mean, it makes sense why people are not as social here. Um, because again, you have a longer commute when you move here. Also, things are more, ex- the, the houses are more expensive, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to perform. When you get here, this is not like a place where you find people are more relaxed. Um, so I think it's 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 it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I just think that you got to be proactive about making sure that you foster an opportunity to um, create new relationships, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to create a um, a social network, right? To create. Um, an opportunity to not just have everything fall on yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So we have this comment right here. This was actually posted just recently on our YouTube channel. Uh, and it says, uh, the other the other thing I love about living in Northern Virginia is that it attracts people from all over the country and the world. It's amazing how many different languages are spoken here. And part of our food scene is the wonderful variety of international and regional foods in our supermarkets and restaurants. The NBCs in D.C. also put on lots of cool events throughout the year, which is another way of experiencing other cultures and areas. So this is kind of the the solution to the whole people problem is or not the people problem, just the. Meeting people meeting problem. Meeting people problem um, is that we have a lot of things to do here. So there's a lot of ways that you can kind of connect with people uh, in this area. We have a large meetup um, community as far as like having different events to kind of get connected to. I run a dad's group up on meetup where uh, local dads get together and it's more like a male bonding, male support group. So if you're out there and you're looking for, if you're a dad or you know a dad in this area, Tell them to holler at me, um, DC Dads Group on Meetup. Then there's also every hobby that you can think of, right? The cool thing about living here, you know, because most a lot of people here make a lot of money, um, there's everything here. Mm-hmm. Everything that you could think of is going to be in this area. Yes. If you're interested in doing it, you can find, you can find a group of people doing it. Um, and so if you just get out there, you can definitely meet people organically that way. Next thing on the list is to leverage your kids if you happen to have them. It is a great way to meet people. I was actually just talking to a mom in my neighborhood recently, and we were talking about, you know, um, she's lived here for a few years. She hasn't been here that long, significantly less time than we have. And I was talking to her about how do you meet people. And the truth is, I met most of my close friends when my oldest son started playing Little League. Um, And it's because you see people at the pickup and the drop off, but it's really 
when he got involved in the team sport, a sport that had me sitting at practice for a few hours, that had me sitting at the pa- the ballpark on the weekends to sit through a game that will last a few hours. You just meet people that way. And I really feel like that was one of the first steps in me making real friendships here. So leverage your kids if you have them. If they're interested in an activity, if you're going to go to that activity with them, that's a great way to meet other people who... And not necessarily, I hate, uh, Abraham, I say, I hate, I don't want to be set up on play dates, right? Like I would like to go out, meet people organically and see if there's a connection there. So that is a one way is to leverage your kids and their hobbies. Perhaps you may be able to connect with some of the parents there. And then finally, just be proactive because maybe someone won't come up to you. So you might have to go up to them. Yeah. That's why, I, you know, I have the dad's group. A lot of the, a lot of the wives send their dads there. Are their husbands there on play dates um, for that reason? Because, you know, you got to be purposeful about the fact that you're going to, you, if you move here for a career, that means that you could be here for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't be here for 30 years and not have no friends. Have some fun, find people to enjoy this wonderful environment that we live in. This, there's so much to do, do it with other individuals there's solutions for you out there. So if you're looking to meet people, there's meetup. There's also, you can get more involved in different networking opportunities. There's networking events all around, all uh, the time around this area. Uh, and then there's also a lot of volunteer opportunities as well. Right. So, so that will be your way of kind of bridging the gap between like your, your, your network from back home and your new network here, start developing that and you'll have a much more pleasurable experience. Right. Uh, so b- before we go to the next talking point, we have one more comment. Adam is also from Louisiana. Adam, what part of Louisiana you're from? We're from New Orleans. Excellent. New Orleans proper. Um, yeah. Excellent. So our, our last topic on tonight is going to be allergies. Allergies. I don't I don't have them. Um, I'm so thankful I don't have them because I see the missus uh, struggling with them. And um, it doesn't look fun at all. It doesn't look fun at all. Yeah, so one thing about living in this area is you're going to find that even if you previously didn't have allergies, uh, you may end up with end up with them after some time living here. Um, I already had allergies, but they got severe, I mean, significantly worse once I moved here. And both of our sons actually developed allergies after moving here as well. Um, and so this is an area that is known for people having allergies in both the spring and the fall. So in the springtime, you're going to have a lot of pollen allergies um, and pollen can get pretty high here too. the pollen level can get pretty high here. And then in the fall, we're also going to have ragweed allergies. And so this is just an area that even if you never had allergies before, you may develop them here. And that's because we have a lot of different trees um, that are not native even to this area, but just have been flown in over time. And so you just have to get used to that and this is actually one of the top areas in the country for allergies it is the seventh highest um google search for allergies and also it has been the rated the fifth workspace to live for people with allergies so just keep that in mind common allergies here are going to be pollen from birch trees um, also from certain grasses like timothy grass and as i said ragweed is really bad here in the fall yeah um this is a, you know, this is an international city. So we have all of the pollen that you've never met before. So even if you've been um, managing your pollen or managing your allergies very well, wherever you are, mm-hmm. I just want to let you know that uh, Northern Virginia is going to slaughter you. Like it's, uh, it, it's going to get to you. Yeah. And it's a common thing. Like it, this is not like, oh, sure, Crystal, you, used, you, you never had allergies before you moved here. Like it is a common thing. You go into the doctor, there are loads. If you look it up, there are loads of articles about it. And people who say that they never had allergies all of a sudden have them when they move here. And it can be a pain is like I said, especially now at this time of year, um, usually right around the middle of spring is when all the pollen starts to really just bother people, which is right around that time when like the cherry blossoms bloom and the bluebells uh, bloom and everything's blooming. And now allergies yep so some solutions for you with the allergy uh allergy issues is you know watch the pollen uh count that's what they count um also change clothes often you probably want to start taking regular shower i mean i I know you i know you take regular showers i'm Mm -hmm. just saying that you probably want to increase the number of showers you take well when you have allergy perfect example is i took a hike earlier today and so as soon as i got in the very first thing i did was take those outside clothes off and get in the shower because you want to try and immediately get the pollen off you because otherwise you're going to be like i was i had to take my contacts out hence the glasses tonight 
um, because the out my allergies were just so bad today, and I was only outside for maybe an hour and a half. So just be mindful of the po pollen count. Change your clothes when you get in after you've been outside for a while. Um, I actually have found wearing a mask is helpful. So like during the initial, during the beginning of the pandemic, just wearing a mask, I really didn't have much of an issue at all with my uh with my uh allergies so much. Um, and now that people are back out, including myself, out walking about without my mask so much, definitely feeling a difference. And it's only been like a week. Yep. Also, you want to stock up on your over-the-counter allergy meds. I know you're thinking to yourself, you know, I, I could do without the meds. I'm telling you, if you have any type of allergies uh, from where you where you currently live in America mm -hmm. or, or wherever you are in the world, this place here, we have we have the cherry blossoms, which is which is isn't even a native tree. I mean, it's just yeah, we have all kinds all of over, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's gonna get you. We have crepe myrtles, which which we even find in New Orleans. So I mean, there's everything here. I mean, it's sometimes your car looks a hot mess in the springtime too. You have this thick, <laughs> thick layer uh, of pollen uh, to deal with. So so just prepare yourself for that. It's going to be a uh, um, a trying couple weeks, and then yeah. it's over. And then it's over. Yeah, it's going to last for maybe six weeks or so, and then it'll be over. Same thing in the fall. So that's one of the positives, right, is that it doesn't last for too long. Right. You know, we're, we're going to deal with this. I'm going to be in and out of glasses and contacts for the next four to six weeks, and then everything will level out. That's true. Excellent. So we just covered the four things that you won't like living in Northern Virginia. Um, those are traffic, right? We do have a traffic issue, but, you know, you can mitigate that through living closer. Um, there's also different commuting options uh, as well. It is expensive to live here. That's true. Uh, the cost of living, the cost of houses is expensive. Mm -hmm. Other things aren't really that expensive. I think that everything else is kind of similar prices as most uh, of America. But you can mitigate that by starting to compromise, getting um, acclimated to living in maybe a smaller space. Um, I know you probably are used to uh, a single family home or maybe where you're coming from, you know, you, you only want to have a single family home. Mm -hmm. Townhouses here, we live in a townhouse. It's about, what, 1,800 uh, to 2,100 square feet. It's We find that it's ample enough space, right? Just just get used to saying it's enough. <laughs> it's enough space. He, right? He's convinced himself. Now I can't get him to move, just so you guys know. So if you do come compromise and get into a townhouse just know you may never get into a single family home because now i can not get him to leave it that's true that's true you don't <laughs> need all that stuff anyway anyway um so then it's uh it is hard to meet people but you can be proactive there's all we have we have access to uh both uh a lot of activities as far as hobbies are concerned there's just a lot of things as far as like special interests that mm -hmm. we also have access to so there are ways that you could find commonality with individuals who already live here do your best to be proactive um if you're going to be here making a career for yourself you know think about it like this you're going to be here 30 years or 20 25 years don't be here by yourself. Absolutely. Join yeah. his. Uh, if you're a dad, join his dad's group. They meet right. once a month yeah. uh, for Twice coffee. Twice a month. Well, I was, I was oh, going to go, say go ahead, go ahead. they get it meet out, get it out. once a month for coffee and they go out for they go on one outing a month. So that's what I was going gotcha, to say. Gotcha, gotcha. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. And so there's, there's definitely meetup groups here. We have a very active meetup group community. So try some of those uh, as well. And then lastly, their allergies. Right. So. Allergies here are, um, you know, they're, they're... It's a way of life. Yes. So stock up on your Claritin and your Zyrtec and your Benadryl, your Flonase, uh, and also some allergy eye drops. I have all of those things. That's why I yep. was able to rattle them off so quickly. <laughs> Just get yourself a little cocktail and then... Uh... Figure out what works for you and you'll be okay. I, I, it doesn't keep me from hiking, right? That's I take true. my Claritin at night. I keep my eye drops handy still going to go hiking every day that's true excellent so so that's that's it uh for us we want to jump into some questions so we'll be here for a few minutes answering some questions uh so adam is from Tulua. okay so that's outside of monroe excellent hey adam thanks so much for uh joining us you're going to love living in northern virginia i gotta say monroe has Nothing to do compared to us. Nothing, nothing, nothing on, nothing on it. Especially yes. if you like went to like ULM or something. Yes. Like it's completely different here. Yep, absolutely. 
And then we have Clay saying, you are truly the dream team. Thank you so much, Team Walker, for everything you have done to help us out. Yeah, Clay and the, his family are moving to the area in a couple weeks or a couple, couple months. months, actually. And we're really excited uh, that we've been able to help you guys. So thank you so much. That's true. Yeah, Clay and them actually just went on the contract today. Hooray. And just so you guys know, Clay reached out to us via the Perfect Home Questionnaire. That's true. So. Um, if you are interested in relocating to the area, if you just have some questions for us, maybe you're not ready to transact at the moment, fill out the perfect home questionnaire and we will schedule a consultation between you and Abraham where you can discuss everything that you want to know, any questions that you have. Um, we can get you get the ball rolling on helping you move. Excellent. Um, so what did you what did you learn from this um, research project? What did I learn from this anything one? new? You know what? I don't actually think I learned anything new in this one, although I think that uh, it did make me reflect a little bit on meeting people um, so? and just how uh, we've been here for nearly 10 years at this point um, and just how I went old. about. We were, we were the young parents when we moved here. Oh we my, the well, young that was actually one of the things I saw this woman, I this mom in the area I met recently. I was telling her that when we moved here, like we were the young parents and we are not the young parents anymore. That's true. My skin um, is getting <laughs> Um But just meeting people and being proactive about that, because that was one of the things that my first year or two here, I w wasn't really proactive about it. But once I found uh, the way that I could get in with people. And another thing I want to point out is I didn't mention it earlier, but I did in a previous video. It's not that people here are standoffish. I think that a lot of people are waiting for you to speak to them first and because they're new and you're new. And so both of you are awkward and you don't know if, you know, you think that they've lived here for 10 years and they already have their circle, but you don't know that they moved here six months ago. And so just be proactive and go out and put yourself out there. Um, that's what I finally had to do to meet people. And it's worked out well. Yeah. Um, what about you, sir? I think that this, this particular video just helped me to realize that, you could really be content wherever you are, right? So a lot of people, we have heard these complaints about this area. We've had some of the complaints uh, about this area. Be becoming more solution-oriented, right? Mm -hmm. Like focusing on, okay, great. I, first of all, identifying your problem and then stating to yourself, okay, great, these are the solutions that are available to me or th mm -hmm. these are the steps I'm going to take could definitely help you to kind of mitigate your your issues. Like I was talking to somebody on Facebook today. Uh, they were they were complaining about how expensive it is to live in this area. And I just suggested to them, you know what? If you're not able to afford a townhouse or a single family home right now, then maybe you just start out with a condo right now. You own the condo for a few years, build some equity, and then you'll have a larger down payment when you sell the condo in the future. Mm -hmm. And then you can um, move up into a larger property like you, your desires today. But if you don't, if you don't make a move or you, if you don't mm -hmm. like look for a solution, then you still have the same problem. So mm -hmm. I think that this video and others like it just helped me to see that yes, there traffic is traffic is not ideal, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there are ways to mitigate it, right? There are yeah. ways to improve your situation or just um, become content with it, right? Mm -hmm. there, it doesn't make sense to be one of those road rage people in the morning who who's rushing in rush hour traffic, mm -hmm. despite the fact that there are a million cars in, in front of <laughs> you. Those cars are not going anywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, another thing is in making this, right, in, in researching this, um, is I realized that these are not bad problems to have. If these are the worst things I could come up with right. about living in Northern Virginia, then these are not the I would take these problems like seven days out of seven. Yes. Yes. Because we we left New Orleans, which had some problems. They had real problems. They had real problems. Yeah. And so, it you know, sometimes it feels kind of comical talking about the problems that we have in Northern Virginia because it's not as uh, dire. I mean, we have such great public schools. We also Throughout have, Northern Virginia. We have a low crime rate. We have a low unemployment uh, rate. We have... The housing market is steady. Yeah. I mean, it's just for us overall, like there are so many positives. Yeah, we have four seasons. I mean, I'm telling you, four you seasons. there there's there's so many things that are are positive here mm -hmm. that that it is a struggle to even come up with these lists, but I just want to let you know, like I think the biggest problem that most people are going to have on the list is the uh people problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have the dads that are in my dad's group and they 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 have challenges 
uh, getting out there and meeting new people. And this area can consume you, right? Because you make more money here, but also you probably bought a bigger house or your your house note is a little bit more than you're accustomed to. You have a, a little bit longer commute. You have your kids. Kids have a lot to do here. So you're shuttling them around. So then your life can become about all of these, you know, your your um, work, your your kids, right? Also, you have your relationship, whatever you, whoever your spouse is. Mm-hmm. So then you don't really spend that much time building a um a personal support group for yourself and you know that time could get away from you right and so i'm Mm -hmm. i'm a big proponent of you're here you might as well just have a great time here like how do you have a great time here yeah yeah and we actually have one more comment and so uh pongo says what's the best city for diversity and have great schools in northern virginia um, so we have areas we actually do outside of Arlington, um, which isn't technically really a city either. We don't really have cities. We have areas. And so what do you think are the best? Uh, I would say Arlington would be the best for diversity and great schools. Um, however, Arlington is also going to be the most expensive area. Yeah. There's not that many transactions in Arlington, mm-hmm. too. So um, I would also say that Arlington is a bit challenging to get into because of the limited number of transactions mm-hmm. and because this is a, a high cost of living area, it's going to take, um, you may have to do something that you're not comfortable with mm-hmm. to, to secure a property in Arlington. Well, but outside of that, I would say, if you're talking about great schools, I would say while you're thinking, I would say uh, Springfield is fairly diverse um, with some really great schools. Mm-hmm. Um, also I think, so the thing about Fairfax County is the further North you are in Fairfax County, the less diverse it's going to be. Right. Out, but also the more expensive it's going to be yes. and the better the schools are going to be. So yeah. it really is a trade off because the further South you go into Fairfax County, you're still going to have schools that are well regarded and even some that are highly rated, but they're not going to be as highly rated as the schools in northern Fairfax County. Yes. Um, and that's just because the areas with more diversity also tend to have uh, more students on free and reduced lunch. Um, and so you just, you have to kind of figure out what that sweet spot for yourself is. Um, and are you looking for only, you know, eight, nine rated schools? Or are you open to five to seven rated schools? Yeah, I would also say, what type of diversity are you looking for, too? Are you looking for racial diversity? Or are you looking for income diversity, mm-hmm. right? Um, so those are going to be two different uh, things in this region. The good news is is that the um, – so you have Arlington, which is going to be more expensive than Fairfax County, um, and then it's also more expensive than City of Alexandria. You, you're probably, if you're looking for great schools, great public schools, you're probably not even looking at the um, Alexandria City just because they have some unique things uh, mm-hmm. about that area. Also, uh, even in Arlington, you're really looking at North Arlington, right. which is the most ex- one of the most expensive parts. Um, she says she's looking for racial diversity. I think uh, you're probably going to consider areas like Springfield, um, maybe Fairfax, Um Alexandria Fairfax County has the most diversity of any part of Fairfax County, right. but you're really going to look at schools that are either going to be middle of the pack to just above middle of the pack. You're not going to have any of the top rated schools in Fairfax County in Alexandria Fairfax County. And when we say middle of the pack, I, you know, one thing that, that kind of concerns me about some of our clients when they're asking us questions about great schools is that the Fairfax County overall school system is a a very good school system Mm -hmm. right so when you wherever you are it's it's likely that there's only one school in your area that's like a lot of the schools in fairfax county Mm -hmm. so when you're going in in fairfax County, we kind of talked to our clients about this about how you're really going from like a 80 to like an 85 Mm -hmm. or maybe like an 85 to like a 93 whereas in new orleans where we came from we were coming from like a 17 exactly and so i think that and that's the thing throughout northern virginia not just fairfax county prince william county is like for the most part schools here have even when you look at lower rated schools their test scores are still really solid right um they're still i think that what ends up happening is the areas with people with more money are skewed to have i don't know if it's because they do more ratings maybe are more surveys are filled what have you but what we do see is in more high cost of living areas you're going to see um you know schools have higher ratings 
But overall, we're still seeing solid graduation rates from schools throughout Northern Virginia. We're still seeing solid test scores. We always tell our parents, um, our parents that we're working with, that we would like to, we would like them to check out as many sources as possible when they look at school ratings. Don't rely on one resource. Like look at niche.com, look at great schools, look at public school review, look at school digger, like look at all of them because some of those sites will give one school a four and you look somewhere else and it has a B rating. You look somewhere else, it has five stars. Um, so just be mindful of that, um, especially great schools because I think that they take parent reviews into, into uh, consideration quite a bit. Yeah, another thing to consider about schools is that um, we showed you a slide earlier with the uh, how much houses cost here, right? Mm -hmm. So just think to yourself, in Prince William County, which is supposedly affordable, houses are $600,000 for a single family home. Mm -hmm. Who makes enough money exactly. to spend, to, to pay $600,000 for a house? In Fairfax County, right, a, a cheap, a cheap, affordable single family house is like $800,000, $900,000. Who who makes that kind of money? Here, people have more education than almost anywhere in the country, right? Mm -hmm. In Arlington specifically, there's more PhDs than anywhere outside of outside of Cambridge, um, uh, Massachusetts. Yes, right. So, so think to yourself: like, what would a PhD um, uh, parent expect out of a school? Expect out of a school. Also, what would they bring to the table? Right. Like um, like our boys. So we're from New Orleans, where a lot of people in the New Orleans culture, they don't consider college as a um, a natural next step. Right. Exactly. Like Abraham and I actually went to a magnet school. Um, and even still, I think only 30 percent of our graduating class went to college. We both did. But a lot of our classmates, a lot of our peers didn't. Yes. We're here. The expectation is everyone is going to move on to higher education. And so we also have a lot of parents. You. Most people in the area have to have higher education. Why? Because they can afford to buy a $600,000 house. Exactly. My my son in first grade told me that he was going to go to Penn State. Mm -hmm. In first grade, in first grade. <laughs> he was already talking about, I want to go to Penn State. I like their mascot. Yeah, I like this, this and that. <laughs> this and that. But that's that's the culture here. We, we, we're in a culture of... We're in a culture of like really top performers mm -hmm. as well, because you got to consider, I, I mentioned this earlier that the median age here is going to be in the mid thirties, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is like a, like a second job uh, market, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that you performed at your current job or you perform the, your current environment and then you got the call to come up to the big leagues mm -hmm. right and so now you're you're coming up to northern virginia mm -hmm. where maybe the headquarters is located maybe there's uh there's several people that have similar qualifications that mm -hmm. you're trying to be around and so those are the parents that make up all of our school system, all of our school all systems. of our school system right uh, because there's really that's the thing here too it's it's that strange i would say that you you have to come to you have to become accustomed to living here is that we don't really have pockets of like poverty here. Like, mm -hmm. it, like there are a few areas in certain places, but for the most part, everyone is upper middle class. Yes. So it's, it's just a different vibe here. So yes, on great schools, you're looking and they're saying that the kids are rated, um, you know, there there's five level um, schools. There's six, seven, mm -hmm. I gotta say, it, it, if you go to one of these schools and you meet the parents and you and you kind of see like what type of teachers are also in the community or in these schools, you'll see that this is the ratings. I don't think are applicable mm -hmm. are are that easy to decipher in this market because mm -hmm. the parents are a different breed, right? So it's a, a different it's a different cut. That, mm -hmm. That's my opinion on the school stuff as a parent and we and uh, our boys went to a i want to say it was rated a six but i can't it was years ago we've been here a long time and we loved that school yeah we yeah. loved it great environment so i think that the, the schools um are there a couple schools that you probably want to maybe steer away from sure sure mm -hmm. i'm not going to say that 
every school is going to be uh, a top tier school. Also, if ratings are super important to you and you're trying to remove any doubt from the equation, you just have to keep in mind that that's going to come at a cost. And if you, if you can afford that cost, then we'll Who be does? happy to sell you uh, <laughs> that particular property. All right. Excellent. Amanda says, what's up, Amanda? Uh, Amanda's also buying a house with us. Uh, your solid, positive, uplifting advice is another reason we choose you. Uh, chose you as our realtors, um, a realtors. Uh, we're so grateful for you. Oh, our pleasure. Amanda, our we're pleasure. grateful for you too. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to see you watching too. Yes, yes. <laughs> Amanda is moving here in a couple months. I'm pretty sure she is super excited to take delivery of her new construction project um, as well. Uh, Pongo says, uh, great info. Thanks a lot. Oh, my, our pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah, we like to do these live streams so we can get these questions out because it doesn't make sense for you to reach out to us just for some of these, you know, feeler questions when you're mm -hmm. early on in the process. I mean, Clay has been watching our channel for like a year now. <laughs> um, so, so we appreciate his support and also using our service. Uh, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Do you guys have any more questions before we head out tonight? Yeah. Um, let's see what else I wanted to, to talk about. Oh, you know what? Not, since we have a few of you all here, what do you all think about tomorrow? I'm thinking about doing a show about the market, like a market update. Uh, there's some numbers that have come out uh, from the first quarter that I want to cover. I don't know if I should do it in a live stream or if I should just do it as a video and just upload it. What are y'all thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. These aren't your stats that you ran earlier this week? Yeah, the okay. stats I ran. Uh, you know, sometimes with stats, you know, it kind of it's kind of boring, right? So for the... Um, yeah, this will be an Abraham video. Crystal yes. will not be in the stats video. Yeah, so <laughs> so let me know. What, what do you think? Would you all like to hear that content or should I just upload that as just like a, a video? Just a, a standalone video. I don't know. But our next live stream video, we're actually going to be talking to you guys about... Um, where we're seeing VA buyers have the most success finding homes yes. um, because it has been a very challenging market uh, over the last few months. And I did a little research. Abraham has done some research and we have narrowed down what the best options are, where we're seeing transactions close most often with VA loans. And so we're going to cover that in our next live stream later this week. Yes. Uh, uh, our audience kind of skews towards more military personnel. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have the most content about um, the military bases, so that's understandable. We do. And we just want to make sure that the members of the military just, they're, they're not beating their heads up against a wall. Absolutely. We've actually heard from a couple of, um, we actually heard from a couple of clients, not necessarily just from their experience in working with us, but also in the Facebook groups. I know you guys have your private Facebook groups, right, for your military families. And they're saying that they're hearing people lament about the struggles that they're having in securing a home or finding a home with the VA loan. And so we wanted to just put out some tips as far as maybe how to win some offers, but also just where you may want to focus your search on. Yep. Because, it, you know, we already shared the numbers and I'll just pull it up again. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, that That's one. not it. Yeah. So if you look, you know, the, the single family numbers are starting to look um, horrendous as you get closer to the DC area. So mm -hmm. it's just time to start being more strategic, right? Or like we mentioned earlier, just start to, compromise right mm -hmm. just come to terms with with what is available to you let's okay. see clay put up a new comment clay said i have found every video valuable excellent clay That's excellent clay here. if you um if you don't know clay knows that my love language is words of affirmation that's right that's right <laughs> Um, all right. And then Amanda says we wouldn't be able to make it to the live, but appreciate all your advice. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Yeah. So so we'll definitely uh post up a video about the market, like a little market update video. And like Crystal already mentioned, our next live stream is just about like how can um where can VA buyers find success? Yeah. Right? Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you all for the questions. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for participating and being active in the chat. We really appreciate it. And we will see you all on the next uh, video. Peace. Peace.